Night Live, you can see that I'm here with Diana. I'm pointing the wrong way according to my... <laughs> hey. So welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be so fun. It Thank is you. a blast to paint with you. Last time I know I, I had a really good time. So I'm looking forward to this tonight. Yeah. Me too. So, boy. <laughs> we'll try not to turn it into paint wars. <laughs> I actually had an idea one time, Diana, that, and, and you could be, we, we're like a team, okay? It's like we can do acrylics versus the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good idea. But uh, if you're joining us tonight, we're so glad that you're here and uh, we're going to have a fun time painting. And uh, Peter's here with us. And I, I got to just say, yeah, Peter, say hi to everybody, and then I just want to make hey, one quick comment. Yeah, go for it. These guys are amazing. Okay, let's see if I can point at them. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. These guys are amazing. You should have just seen the amount of work that they had to do to figure out how to make all this happen. But uh, thank you, Peter. Thank you for uh, helping us do this. And Diana, you were incredible in uh, figuring all this out. So Absolutely. this is going to be really fun. Um, and Diana, can you tell us a yeah. little bit about what we're painting tonight? Because it's your reference photo. Well, this is a place in central Washington where I grew up uh, near Wenatchee, Washington. I grew up part of my early childhood in Wenatchee and part near Leavenworth. And this is the Columbia <laughs> River, just a little bit uh, north of Wenatchee. And... Um, it cuts the Columbia River cuts through these great cliffs, and it's midsummer. the The trees are lit with midsummer light, and it looks like in the photo it's about to rain, uh, which is really a welcome relief there in the summer. <laughs> so uh, awesome! Yeah, that's what it is. Just a few miles north. That of is so I great, and I love that area. Uh, Peter and I both love that area. Um, just the just once you get over to the other side of the you know the the mountains it changes so much right and uh so it's kind of a totally different climate yeah. than where we are here different geography things like that so it'll be kind of fun to see that and paint that and um yeah peter i don't know if i have the reference photo on um my my thing it's pretty small but um maybe we could pull that up at some point too just for everybody to see yeah but welcome everybody we're so glad to be here with you for sure i just want to i just want to say something really quick guys so we're we we're kind of scrambling last minute to get things all set up properly because we had diana uh on here for the first time with this new system so just let us know if there are any problems with the audio or everything like does everything look okay can can i get a thumbs up if everything looks and sounds okay um just so we know everything's working properly um and yeah. can you hear us? <laughs> Big thing. Um, but yeah, you guys can go ahead and get started with whatever, and I'll, I'll pay attention to the chat, yeah. make sure everything's working well. And Dr. Doctor okay. Smith, Shall I you? see there saying, hey, man, we're right here with you for the acrylics. Um, and it looks like everybody's saying it's all working great. So this is awesome. We're excited. Oh. That's a victory. <laughs> That's exciting. Should I switch to my palette? Should I switch to my uh, yeah, go for pencil it. and palette now? Okay, got it. Okay. And I'll try not to kill myself getting over there with these headphones. <laughs> yep. And, uh, and Peter, what might work best is e eventually to switch back and forth because otherwise you won't see very much yeah. of either of our screens. But that's a cool shot right there. I like that. Yeah, I'm, gonna, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start like this for now. Cool, man. This is awesome. And I have, a, I'm going to just paint straight up on a white canvas today. You guys, that's not intentional. That's just because I didn't, uh, <laughs> we, were, we were so busy getting everything else ready that I didn't have a chance. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just walk through real quick while, while we're kind of looking at, at, at you know the overall thing the colors that i have and diana i think you might have different some different colors but what, what i've got is yeah. uh titanium white this is cadmium yellow light this mm -hmm. is cadmium orange this is quinacridone red ultramarine blue mars black and a neutral gray and um basically they're the primary colors plus 
cadmium orange here and I just throw that in because I like bright warm colors and this red leans a little bit more towards the blue and so I throw in that orange just to offset so that I can make um, some brighter brighter colors in that direction but um, I'm gonna just quickly kind of throw on a wash that's uh, gonna be a mix it's gonna be a little bit of a mix of some red and uh, some blue probably. It's gonna end up being a little bit like a, a violet wash on there. I don't know why I'm gonna do that, but just for fun. Okay, and while you do that, I'm gonna explain my colors, which are slightly different than yours. I'm using a Darylide yellow, which is sort of like cadmium yellow, medium dark. And I'm gonna use another yellow, a Hansa yellow opaque, which is kind of like cadmium yellow light. Um, so I'm gonna use both of these yellow, probably mix them together to get that light, bright, summery look. Um, and then I am going to use, um, for some of this, quinacridone burnt orange. Ooh, there's a goop on there. I'm gonna get some better quinacridone burnt orange. It's been hot around here lately, and my people yeah. are suffering for it. There we go. <laughs> and I've also got Indian Throne Blue. Oh, cool. And the reason I love that is I love these greens in the summer, these trees. And it just makes the most yummy summer green, these two colors together. And the other, I'm going to use just a dib-dab of quinacridone magenta because the hills have beautiful violets in them and you cannot get violet with quinacridone burnt orange no matter how hard you try. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to work. And <laughs> So now I'm going to put a... Oh, no, no, oh, no. I, the only thing I was going to say is, and you'll recognize one of the main differences between me and Diana is that she thinks about what she's doing and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's nuts. You're a great artist. <laughs> oh, so I'm going to put a wash on mine, and I'm putting on a warm wash. So we'll see the difference between my warm wash and your cool wash. And we'll uh, just want this. I'm using the quinacridone burnt orange. Well, you, you, because you were kind of talking, you, you, you were just, I wasn't really paying attention to exactly what you were saying, but I, I just realized you were like really thinking about like what you were going to be painting. And so I did throw a, a little bit of cadmium orange on there just to warm that part up a tiny bit. <sighs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> there you go. Well, it's fun how we can uh, inspire each other. I, I've always, I, I've always <laughs> learned a lot from you, Diana. So uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I learned so much from you too. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Um, I missed that you got and how many things I got that you get. Oh, that's a good All idea. Right. I'm, uh, gonna start I'm just designing pulling up my reference photo actually so I can see it, which is uh, hopefully going to help me in the long run. Hey, um, could, could Diana turn up her microphone easily somehow? Yeah. Perfect. Let's see. Yeah. It's, um, I'm not. I can't tell exactly. Stream will have to tell me, but it says it's hard to hear Diana when I turn her up. Then Jed is super loud. So. Um, is that better? Do you want to turn me down, Peter? Turn me down a little bit. I did. I did. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So I've been turning up. Oops. I hope I didn't. What did I do? All right, can you softer? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see. So yeah, right guys, let, let me know if that's better. I know Patricia, you mentioned that, you mentioned that. So let okay. me know if that's a little better for you and um, we'll try and get it tweaked. All right. <laughs> and I'll just yell. <laughs> Perfect. They say it's better. So <laughs> looks like we, looks like we got it fixed. Perfect. All right, smooth sailing. Okay. And. And to answer your question, Diane, I am actually just—I just decided again, maybe to 
do it a little differently. You know, you're going to see two totally different ways of approaching this today. Um, and I'm just painting my sketch on with orange and red. Awesome. And I'm just putting out the ear and where I want values to, to go with a paper towel. And I'm going to put some dark. I'm going to do a little sketch and then put my darks awesome. down. Uh, real just kind of suggestively here. Yeah, this is this is going to be fun, you guys. So we're doing this tonight uh, together. And then in two weeks, we're going to do another one together. Yep. Uh, where Diana and I will paint at the same time, just like this. And the two other weeks of August, uh, we're still going to have Friday Night Live. And uh, it probably won't be as fun because Diane is not here. But no, <laughs> no I'm just joking. No, we'll still have a lot of fun. But, um, but we do have two with Diana. And then we'll have two that are, that are uh, just me and you and everybody else who shows up. But uh, it's going to be a lot of fun here in August. So make sure you... Mark that down yeah. and show up. It's going to be fun. Well, it's nice you made it a little earlier because um, then, then I can show up and I'm not just like totally wiped oh, out. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, especially for our East Coast people, I think uh, – It'll be nice, you know, because I, I was thinking, you know, it, it was funny because the last time we did it, okay, so Peter, I don't know if I even told you this, but last time, you know, we we were, you did not come on with me, right? Mm -hmm. So at the very last minute, you know how I am, I just spur of the moment, I'm like, oh, I should ask some members if, if anybody would want to come <laughs> on, right? So I yeah. threw out this text to some members. And I did I, see that. Yeah, so anyways, uh, a couple awesome, well, actually quite a few people responded, but I was only able to kind of like, re, you know, reach out to a couple. But uh, Raquel Roth was tuned in from, Hal I think, does she live in Halifax? I'm pretty sure it's Halifax. Uh -huh. But that's like Nova Scotia. And that's like not even just East Coast time. That's an extra... It's like either an extra half hour or an extra hour ahead. So, oh. I mean, she, it's an extra hour. Is it? It's a whole yeah, hour. Yeah, I mean, so, yes. so that's <laughs> like, she, I mean, it was like her husband was like going to bed, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hopefully, hopefully it is a little nice. For yeah. That to, um, yeah. Yeah. M. Eckert says, love this new time. So. We have had some okay, comments good. on the new time. And we have a couple comments about a larger reference photo. I don't think we're going to be able to do that tonight, guys, unfortunately. Well, I can... Um, <laughs> yeah, here's what we're looking um, at. Yeah, I know. But the and reference I photo... Pull, I can make it big, too, for you guys, if you want. Um, yeah. To just see it. Yeah, because of how we usually when we have two people, we aren't able to do a reference photo that's as large, but the reference photo is in the pinned comment. So if you look in the comments in the live stream, it's the pinned comment and you can also see it in the description below. Um, and and if you want, like every once in a while, Peter, if you if you do want to switch back and forth between the cameras, it would show up yeah. uh, every once in a while. Most so, people say they prefer the large one side by side. So Okay, yeah. Okay, that well, that's great. All right. Oh. Cool, cool, cool. I have sort of a big abstract on here now. That's cool, Diana. I see what you were doing there with the paper towel and stuff. Yeah. It makes me not be as fussy when I when I get out my brush and start drawing. I start getting to be a little bit um, fussy with stuff. And what I are you saying, Diana? Loose. Are you looking at me? I'm. No, I'm just no. joking. I was just joking around. <laughs> but here I am being fussy. 
<laughs> he is. He's getting in there with a tiny little brush. Uh, uh, that was just that was just for a joke, but I. I <laughs> oh oh. Sorry. No no no. My joke button must be malfunctioning or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Too many yeah. jokes in one day, and that's it. I'm broken. <laughs> All right. And I'm even doing a little finger painting. How fun is that? Very fun. <laughs> okay. I do think that that's a pretty cool uh, method, you know, um, to like like to use something other than a brush, something that you can't control as well, you know, anything like that. That's why I think a lot of times when people do palette knife work, it kind of frees them up quite a bit because it's so much harder to control where the paint goes. <laughs> right. Absolutely. It's crazy. <laughs> Now I'm going to start putting in some of my uh, deeper values here. And I'm just going to mix up a bunch of paint for a minute. I'm just going to watch some paint dry off, off to my left and mix up a bunch of paint onto my right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say where people are coming in from. So we got Joan Bennett from Colorado Springs. Um, Woo! I'm going to have to scroll back a ways to the start of the chat. <laughs> yeah. But we got Jill from Pennsylvania. Um, we have Susan Townsend from St. Augustine, Florida. Um, Janet from Georgia, Susan Eckerd from Montana, Smoky Montana, she says. Yeah, the smoke oh. was, I was just in Spokane and the smoke was terrible there. Um, so I hear you on that one. We have Ann Wright from Irvine, Irvine, California, Amy hey. from Virginia, Sherry Atherton awesome. from Everett, Washington, um, Diane Stiegletter from Camino, Christian Yay. Lewis from Trenton, Ontario, Canada. Cool. Yeah, people from all over the world. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Wow. Super fun. That's fantastic. Super fun. Yeah, and, and uh, if you see something that you do have a question about, make sure you ask because yep. we are we are willing to answer questions, and we'll we'll try to kind of explain a little bit about what we're doing. But I'm sure that along the way you'll probably see something that you want to know more about. So just go ahead and type. Type it in the chat. Carol from Jamaica in the Caribbean. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. That's nice. Awesome. nice. Nice. Lisa Elliott from Indy. Okay. So is, awesome. Is Diana using a stay wet palette? Asks Jane Schaefer. Yes. I, but instead of the sponge, I put some blue shop towels under my palette paper. Um, and they're soaking wet, but not, they're not dribbling wet. Um, but I like it better than the sponge because it keeps things wetter. So yes to the stay wet. It's just a little bit customized. Cool. And I just added some cerulean blue because I want a variety of blues in the sky, blues and blue grays. Um, that blue might find its way down into the shadows too. Okay. Um, Sharon Stritchell says, please explain why Diana is painting on a square and Jed is painting on a rectangle. It's a good question. Um, now, just a second before you get into it, I just need to highlight these two <laughs> both of them growing hey willow hey silver silver is fat man oh my goodness <laughs> uh, yeah thanks for coming in you guys i'll tell a little story about poor silver after diana explains uh the Oh, why I'm painting uh, well, on a yeah, square? Well, yeah, I mean, whatever. You were, you were in the middle of something. Not that you have to explain. 
<laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. You go, you go ahead. I will, I will hold that question in my mind for a minute while you talk about silver because she knows Well, it. you know, Diana, <laughs> this is Diana's reference photo, and I cropped, my, I cropped it to be uh, the, the three by four size. But uh, we didn't ever really actually talk about the, the reference photo beyond that Diana picked it. And then I, I sent it to Renee to put into the, um, as, as the reference photo. But I cropped it a little bit. I don't remember exactly. I think it was a bit, little bit longer and more horizontal. So both of us mm -hmm. kind of um, made it more square. She did fully square and I did the three by four because I normally paint on a 12 by 16 for this. And I chose a 16 by 16 inch panel. Um, and I just really liked the way the shapes fit. Like there's all these diagonals and I liked the way they fit onto this square. And so I took my reference photo, printed it up, and then I just did that. I cropped it off. So I had a square. My, see my, my really great technical cropping, <laughs> cropping tool here. It's great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. There's my square, yeah. right? <laughs> but I really loved how these diagonals went through on a square piece. That's all. And um, every artist has their own idea, which is perfect. We, if we all painted the same image the same way it would be yeah. really boring so uh i'm really happy we're doing very different yeah things. it's it's a, again it's you know kind of the same same scene but like like any any time you ever see paintings of the same scene by different artists it's it's they're almost always quite different and you know you can somebody once told me that the most important lines uh, on your canvas are the ones right around the edge um, because that's how you you're, you're deciding what the actual dimensions you know what the what the uh, shape of the canvas is and and uh, it's like probably the earliest decision you make one of the earliest decisions in your painting process but it's not one that is really I mean I think you want to be thoughtful about it like both of us uh, looked at the design that we were trying to we, we thought, well, this would make a design that I could paint and then, you know, kind of either crop the photo or, or something to fit that and to fit the canvas. So it's, it's a very important part of the painting process, even though it happens <laughs> before you ever get out the paintbrush. Absolutely. That was well said. Now, <laughs> what I was going to say about silver, this is that I kind of feel bad about saying this, but it's true. So I'll just say it. Silver, we, we, uh, he's, he's, he's like an indoor cat, right? I mean, he doesn't really go outside very much, but yesterday he wanted, I mean, he, oh, he loves going out, but we don't let him out to roam because there are coyotes around and eagles and stuff like that that would definitely come and kill him. And it would, it would really break Willow's heart if, if something bad happened to him. So, I I feel bad for him sometimes, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I don't want Willow to to have to, you know, like say bye to Silver if just because, you know, we let him out or something like that. So what we do is we put him out in his his um, cat carrier cage thing, you know, the little thing that you would take him somewhere with. And he loves it. He actually just, he, like, he thinks he's a big boy. He sits out there and he watches the birds and he feels like he's a part of nature. And mo mostly what he does is he sleeps. But anyways, we usually let him out for, you know, a couple hours and just he just sits there in his little cage thing. But yesterday, we accidentally forgot him. We, we got in a rush to leave and we went to Willow's Gymnastics and he was outside for not super long, but it was... It was longer than normal for sure. Like, and when we got back, he was, he was like so happy to see us. <laughs> oh. And he just, he's, he had Aww. no desire to go outside today. 
<laughs> like I just put him out a little <laughs> while ago because he finally kind of came around to want to again. But anyways, it was kind of funny. He's like, ah, I've been outside enough for a while. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um Okay, so we have a question from Christian Lewis. Um, real quick on the on the same subject, though, somebody says, our neighborhood has lost many a cat and small dog due to coyotes, so don't feel too bad about being protective. I know. Um, That's the reality. A bunch of our neighbors yeah. have. So I'm like, okay, I don't, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. Christian Lewis says, I'm enrolled in Jed's miniature painting challenge, and something I wondered about is he doesn't paint in layers, which I hear recommended a lot. Any comments about that? Uh, Go, Jed. <laughs> well, I guess it's, it, I, I guess I would wonder why you say I don't paint in layers. And I'm just kind of wondering if it's um, because I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I don't paint in layers. I, maybe I don't. Maybe in, and maybe that's depends on what the definition is. But um, when, it, when you see me paint in a, for a lesson, it's also not exactly necessarily the same process that I that I might use in in a different painting because if I'm doing a layered painting like for instance I would say that this painting does have layers for instance I put on a I toned the canvas right I I drew on the design I'm painting over those things and I'm going to keep layering paint on top of these things but it it may not look like your definition of of uh, layering so um I, I and i can't really speak to what that definition would be but but also when i'm painting live like this you're not going to see me really uh, allow the canvas to dry and then do a glaze over the whole thing and then let that dry and then come back and do something else and then maybe do another glaze or anything like that because there's just not time to do a bunch of that kind of thing. So um, that's, that's one answer as to why you may not have seen me do something like that, but not sure if that answers the question perfectly. It's the best answer I can give right now, though. Mm -hmm. No, that's a good one. Yeah, and it is a good question. Um, cause mm -hmm. But it's also, everybody has their own particular way of seeing and representing, and, and those kinds of statements are sort of generalizations to, you don't have to paint in layers even though Jed does, yeah. you don't have to. It's not a Well, and maybe, you know, because you said, I think the question started with, you know, I've heard that it's good to paint in layers. And and I think that there is, uh, you know, yes. like with all of that, you know, you kind of think like there is a value. What What is the value? You could say like, what's the value of painting in layers? Well, you can do a lot of nuanced things. You can glaze, you can change like the the feel of a painting you know, in one, one kind of glaze or something like that. But then you can also say, well, what's the, what's the benefit of painting very like fast all at the same time, all over the canvas or something like that. And, and then you say, well, what the benefit would be that it's very spontaneous and you have uh, colors that kind of tie in together because if you're using the same brush on different parts of the painting and, you know, so I think, with every approach, there's going to be some positive uh, things that, that you could say that's a definite benefit. And then there's probably going to be things that you say, well, that's the limitation of it is that mm -hmm. you're not going to get as much um, of the nuanced, you know, subtle changes with, that, a, that a glaze could bring or, or something like that. But there's always a, a positive. So it's really just about... Yeah. thinking through what what you're going for in my mind mm -hmm. yeah what do you want yeah what do you want from your painting jigger you... oh go oh, ahead sorry. jigger stopped by donate another 20 dollars and says insert witty art related comment here <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> You're so funny, man. I know. Without fail. I know, I know, I know. So Thank awesome. you, Digger. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Um, I wish that I could insert a witty art comment for you, too, <laughs> but uh, yours will suffice because... <laughs> Um, yeah. A couple yeah. people are saying, Dinah, that your palette looks like you're painting from a different angle, like if you rotated it or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it yeah, totally it does. does oh, just that. <laughs> that is funny. Um, can someone tell me what dark blue Dinah is using? I missed it. Yes, Indian Throne Blue. And then the lighter blue is Cerulean. Uh, but Indian Throne makes a nice, more neutral color rather than super bright. And I wanted these darks to, to lay back just a little bit with this neutral blue. A lot of people are enjoying the different or the, the earlier start time and also the um, also just the uh, seeing two people approach the same painting differently. Yeah, I think that's. It's funny because I can't see Jed tonight, so I just have to imagine yeah. he's just doing this amazing job and I'm fighting oh, to no. keep up with him. Even no, no, I no, no. It's see. actually quite the opposite. <laughs> Your painting is quite a bit further along than mine um, in terms of looking like it's oh. it's representing the paint, the picture and everything like that. Um, yeah, but I, I, it is fun to, uh, I mean, and I know that you can't enjoy this in, because you can't see it, but it is fun to look over it because I can just look up and see your painting it's it's pretty cool like it's really fun uh yeah oh well good thanks <laughs> this is fun this is a, it blast, is a blast i have to say and it's sort of uh painting blind a little bit is super fun too. yeah <laughs> just knowing well you're you there know it, it, is really it there is a um there is an event that they, I don't know if where it happens, if it's happening anymore, but there was this thing called Art Battle. And I'm sure some of the Canadian people who are here with us have probably heard of it or maybe even been to it because I think it's started in, in Canada. But um, it's kind of like this. It, it's, a, it's basically like a competition for artists, and it's a live event. And you had they, they they create a circle at least the way that i've seen it is that there's like a circle of people of artists and they're all uh facing their own canvas and so you can see people around you but you can't really see what what the other artists are doing and uh but everybody just i it seems to me that they just pick whatever they want to paint um, and so probably something that they're pretty familiar with and, and feel confident with and uh, they just go for it and I, it's timed it's I think it's half an hour or something it's pretty short I think um, somebody will probably correct me on that but um, it looks to me like a really fun thing and, and some of the images that I've seen painted out of that are pretty cool but this is kind of like that except that it's not a competition and and I can see what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it's not a competition. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it definitely isn't, uh, except that it's a competition of us versus every oil painter in the world. Right? Oh, no. That, that's oh, too no, much no, pressure. no. This is acrylics. <laughs> this is what I was going to say. There. Acrylics versus the world. That. <laughs> yeah, they rule, don't they? It's amazing uh, how wonderful acrylics are. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun too to realize, you know, how um, 
our work is, you know, there, like we've talked about this before, but we've, we've, uh, we paint, we have a similar approach in, in so many ways. And yet at the same time, um, like every artist is so different, right? And, and uh, you know, when you, yeah. you sit back and look, it's like my friend, I was talking to a friend today who just uh, had the, well, he just delivered 49 paintings for a show at a, at a museum. Whoa. And he said it's the first time he's ever seen that many of his paintings together. And I mean, that's a lot of paintings, right? So uh, I said, well, he said um, that he, he was kind of surprised because he said, you know, he, he only sees basically usually like one painting at a time. And he thinks, oh, they're quite different than each other. And, and then he saw all of them together and he realized that he, he really has a distinct style, right? And that he, he can recognize, you know, now after seeing all of them together, he can kind of see his style a little bit more. And I thought that was interesting because we don't, we don't always know what we paint like, you know, and, and until it's compared to something else. And then like, cause I'm just used to seeing my own work. Right. And then when I see you paint this, I yeah. think, Oh wow. Like we we're totally different. Like the way that, yeah, we're totally it's different. so interesting. <laughs> we are totally yeah. different. It's crazy. <laughs> and and for some reason tonight, I'm approaching this very differently than I normally approach a painting. I'm just sort of working top down, which uh -huh. I never do. But it just felt yeah. right tonight. So it's, it's what I'm doing. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, I know. Well, what made you do it? Just, just the way you started or? The way I started, it just, it, somehow it just yeah. felt right to, to bring it down yeah. from above. Um, and I, I hardly ever start like that. I almost always start from a certain color or a certain value and work yeah. the whole canvas, but I yeah. don't know. I, you know, that process is, is, um, you know, it changes and, you know, some people have a process, they go through the same all the time. And I normally do, but not yeah. tonight, <laughs> yeah. just not tonight. And maybe it's uh, just feel, you know, I'm just sort of feeling my way through the textures yeah. as I'm working down from this sky. I want them all to uh, work together. Um, and so I'm being pretty deliberate about my textures. Yeah, that's, that's one thing that I, I, I know you I do really so well that. is you bring a lot of texture to your to your work, um, which is so cool. Um, the, my last show that I I just I just kind of delivered also to Cole Gallery here. Um, it was fun. I I I used palette knife more on it. I've been trying to do that when I have a larger kind of body of work, or if I'm doing painting for a show, a lot of times I'll be more deliberate or, or the other thing is if it's a larger painting, sometimes I'm more aware, like I want to like bring some extra texture to this. And it was kind of fun to get out the palette knife and really go at it for a while. And every once in a while, when I sat back and looked at it at the end, I thought this is probably what Diana feels like looking at her, some of her paintings because they have, you know, <laughs> such good texture in them. I just love texture. I'm crazy about yeah. texture. I'm crazy about looking at it in other people's work too. It makes me happy. What I love about your work is your big, like you make these big, juicy, confident marks that are just you just lay them down and they're fabulous you know i just love that about your work me i kind of just overlap all these little <laughs> colors and kind of 
you know, sort of uh, zigzag them all together, <laughs> string them all along. Uh, but you just go bam, and there's this fabulous color up there. I love it. Sometimes it's fabulous. But you know what has helped me so much <laughs> has been using a limited palette. I, I can't even, it's just so, so yeah. nice to never, I never worry about my colors anymore. I just think, does it look okay? You know, like, does it look good or not? And then if, if it needs to be adjusted, you know, I mean, it's not that everything I put down is automatically the one that I want, but I never really have those situations where it's totally wrong. You know, it's like so wrong that I have to do yeah. something right then to fix it. You know, it's more like, okay, I could adjust that a little bit, but I give credit to, well, let's see, where did that start for me? I mean, I do think that part of it was, I've definitely been influenced by you in, um, like I'm not doing it tonight with my palette, but I have been influenced by you in the way that you set up your palette. Um, which, you know, tonight I'm just going from the um, from the box, but I'll tell you that limited palette thing makes so much difference. I when I switched, it it changed my life. I mean, it changed my painting life. I went from struggle uh, to successful painting in like just one time because I wasn't matching a photograph anymore. I was creating a color harmony within yeah, this yeah. space and just using the photograph to, um, to, in, you know, to sort of talk to me about it. But they, this is more colors, five colors in, and white. And, and, um, I'm surprised I chose this many, but, um, Again, tonight's a weird night. So, <laughs> so there we go. I'm just sort of shocked at some of these choices, but oh well. Um, but I think my when my students started struggling and they just couldn't get the right color, and then I was struggling at home. I'd take eight hours to you know just standing in front of the easel trying to get two colors to look right together. It just made sense to to limit. And then once I started reading what other, you know, really um, experienced artists were saying, they said the more experience they got, the more yeah, they their Yeah, yeah, so interesting. <laughs> I said, okay, I'm going, yeah. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Down from about 20 colors to yeah. usually three. That's awesome. Um, I saw somebody, I saw Judy um, just said that the... Uh, um, that there was an art battle that the next art battle she said is happening in San Francisco on August 16th and then the then one wow. after I think I'm getting the dates right it's the comment I can't see anymore but August 16th and then there's another one in Seattle it sounded like on the 27th I think so look at that the art battle lives on Whoa, that yeah. sounds like fun, actually. Um, you. A couple people are asking, Diana, what, if you're painting on a canvas or a board? This is a board. It's masonite that has a cradle. And um, I've got some other ones here. There, It's an Ultra Smooth by Da Vinci. I absolutely have fallen in love with these ultra smooths. If I can get one out without crashing my studio, I will. They look like this, and they just come like just mirror smooth. And all my brush marks then show up on it. Like every brush mark That's is awesome. a mark. Instead of, you know, I consider this to be a small piece, a 16 by 16. Um, Canvas sometimes just totally disrupts the things that uh, I want to say. You know, you get all that weird texture. And so I love this ultra smooth for small works because I build the texture with my brushwork instead of having, you know, most canvases look like a machine did it. Obviously it did. And um, I, just, I just love having um, 
another option, which is my brush making this texture. Yeah, that's cool because you're almost you you have to cover up the texture on a canvas most of the time before you can yeah show the canvas in your painting. That's cool. So anyway, I've just I went ahead and just ordered a whole bunch of these for miniature paintings and for the little work. Oh, okay. do. nice. Um, just because it makes sense yeah. to me. Every time I go back, then I start fighting with the canvas texture and having a you know <laughs> an argument with the canvas texture. Having a battle that you don't need to have. Right. <laughs> Same way with all those yeah. extra colors. Um, as soon as I let go of all those extra colors, I could just make a light bright green and not worry about which yellow and which blue I added because I've yeah. only got one. Yeah, so it's I amazing. Know. I know. I'm, I'm totally with you. I use, I like the, the canvas that I have is, the reason I like it so much is just what you're saying. Even though it is a canvas, it has very minimal texture and it it's it's kind of like as close to um, a smooth panel as you can get, yet still be a be a a, a, a canvas. But I I'm with you. I've I've liked because especially especially on a on a little canvas. I mean sometimes I'll paint on a little canvas and I'll have a normal a normal canvas and it's like almost all you see, especially when you take a little, like you take a picture and you're looking at it and you're like, all I see is the texture of the canvas. It's like, right. wow, I didn't want to, you know, highlight the texture of the canvas, but that's pretty much what I did. Right, I know. And, the, and unless you put a giant glob of paint down, that's what yeah. everybody sees is that texture. I, I remember, you know, going to a couple of um, uh, exhibitions where I'd see a painting from across the room and I'd run up and go, oh my gosh. And then I'd be so disappointed because once I got there, all I saw mm. was canvas and not yeah. painting. Um, I'm totally messing up. I need to stop for a minute. look so in that texture discussion that's why I'm doing all this scribbling I'm gonna cover this scribbling up but it creates an extra texture under the canvas that I think is or under the paint that I think is really fun to paint over top of it's why I take the end of my brush and just scratch around under there. Um, people are asking where you get those panels, Diana. Um, I think I got them at Cheap Joe's Art Stuff Online. Cheap Joe's Art Stuff Online. All right. Cheap. Yep. But they're Da Vinci, right? Is, did you say they're Da Vinci? So yeah, that's a, that's like a pretty panel. common brand that you could probably find at any of the big any of the big uh, places would probably have it. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure that they would have it at like Dick Blick. You just need to go, you know go online and, and yeah, ask yeah, that, search ask for the it. Question. Although you know, uh -huh. it's funny. I mean, most of those are. At, at the various places, but there are some, like the one that I get, I know um, I've only found um, at, because I think sometimes they get their own, like their own brand to make it, but they don't, it, it's not, but it, the one that I get is from, um, you said, oh, you said Cheap Joe's, right? And I, yeah, the one yeah. that I use is only, I can only find it at Jerry's Artorama. So yeah, it's kind well, of. There you go. <laughs> I, see, I shop those Cheap Joe's, Jerry's, and, yeah. uh, and Dick Blick. 
and I go. Sometimes I have all three things oh, open and yeah, go back I do the, and forth I do the same thing. I mean, I, we, and... I, currently I'm not anymore. I, I I might go back and talk with Blick again um, because I I had a conversation. I told them why I was like kind of complaining about something, and so we kind of parted ways. <laughs> well, it wasn't a big uh -oh. deal, but but I was just like we were doing these live events with them and they got harder and harder to, to kind of figure out how to work it. And, and I was like, just kind of saying something like, I don't know, but I, I, I probably said more than I needed to because they took it kind of like, Oh, you don't want to work with us. And I wasn't saying that I was just saying like, I don't really want to do these events anymore because they're, they're a lot of work and they're, you keep changing kind of like how we can do it. And, but they're trying to figure stuff out because they're having all these scams and it's so frustrating. Like, oh, no. I don't know. I think they probably have figured it out now, but it just means that they can't do things the way that they used to get a lot of people on their live events. And then they got all these scams happening and people were getting gypped out of money because these scammers were making it oh, no. seem like they were Blick. And uh, yeah, it was like a real bummer. But then it made it really complicated for us to do the live events because we had to, I don't know, it was just like all complicated and stuff. And so. Yeah, trying to keep the bad guys out. Yeah. That's, you know, oh, you had to build them, have to build them yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I think about this sometimes, like, it's crazy how hard many people work. <laughs> yeah that to be bad <laughs> and like how many complicated <laughs> systems we have just because somebody abused it beforehand like yeah the system is complicated because it's been abused only by because yeah i know yeah well and i always think man like some of these people who are doing this are obviously really smart they're really intelligent <laughs> yeah, they actually work pretty hard they're I, setting I know. up the, you know like please like let's find a job for you that you can i know do like, good at you know you work <laughs> half as hard yeah, yeah i know you're dedicated to your craft it seems yeah. like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny oh man it's so funny but it's so not funny at the same time <laughs> it's like Oh man. Right. Somebody told me if there wasn't scams, our insurance, like just people's insurance in general would be like a quarter of what it is or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, shoot. See, I made these trees giant, but I'm not minding them being giant. Good job bringing us back to artwork. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I am going to subdue these hills a little bit. I've got a very pretty vibrant color back there and I like it, but it's it's not pushing them back in the background quite enough, so I'm adding a little bit of blue to them. Even even in the sunlight. Yeah. Here. When I was a kid, and I'd look up at those hills in the summer, and they reminded me of like the fur of a lion. They were so mm. soft, and they just rolled like you know, like this, like the thighs of a lion would roll in the light and shade. And I just, not that I'd ever seen a lion because I lived in the sticks, but that's what I what I always thought of them as huh. giant sleeping lions. That's cool. Uh, Um, Sue Brent says, Diana, can I ask if your grandkids are painting yet? Yes, actually, they ask to do it all the time. Little Will is two, and he loves to paint. He loves painters, and he knows different artists. He knows my pa my husband paints too, abstract, and he knows my husband's paintings from mine, and he is very opinionated, this little two-year-old, about <laughs> which ones he likes That's and doesn't funny. like. That's funny. Uh, a young kid, uh, yeah, yeah. he'll say, <laughs> and he'll hug it to his chest and run off with it because he yikes it so much, 
And then he says, me paint, me paint, me paint with That's you. That's cute. And so we have to go paint. He's really cute. And he, lo he does love painting. Um, the, uh, the older one is into storytelling. So he, he loves, the six-year-old just loves to, to illustrate his crazy stories with color. And uh, so it's, it's really fun to, to do this. And Oliver really wants to do a team painting project for acrylic oh, really? sometime. So I thought, you know, someday he and I could do that. He wants to do a side-by-side -side mini oh, challenge. Oh, wow. He, That's he cool. That would be great. So, <laughs> so that, wouldn't that oh, be fun absolutely. sometimes to do him and I to do a side-by-side yeah, -side yeah. mini challenge? <laughs> I, Willow has painted with me a couple times on a couple different things um, or we, we at least tried to do a couple things. I'm, I can't remember exactly what we did with them because I had this whole idea about doing um, like kid, kid lessons at one point, you know, um, cause I thought it would be fun. It's just, and I think it, there, there could be a place for it, but it's, it's like a whole other, you know, world out there, you know, so that's, it yeah. sounds so hard, but it was kind of fun to do something with, with her, you know, she was having fun, just probably kind of like your grandson <laughs> would. Yeah. They're, they're pretty, pretty special. He, he popped his face in during, I don't know if you noticed during the, the uh, Facebook live thing. Oh, the really? Other day. And uh, yeah. And he, uh, at the very end, he critiqued my work. I don't know if anyone was still there when he did it, but it was so hilarious. I just, I had to cover my mouth so I didn't just like snort oh. and guffaw online. <laughs> because he said, you know, Grandma, Apples never really have a touch of blue. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Oh okay. boy, that's funny. <laughs> um, uh, well, I was going to say when you were mentioning earlier that, um, that, uh, you know, they'll, your, your grandson, like, he knows what he likes and he'll come and he'll say, I like that one or whatever, you know, he'll hold it. I think it's interesting yeah. because I I love it when like Willow has quite an eye for things like I was working on something and it wasn't art exactly but it was kind of design it was uh, I was working on uh, like a, a website page and she or designed for a picture or something and she she said to me she said something like Oh, I think that's a little too complicated. You know, like you should, you know, simplify that a little oh, bit. Cool. And yeah, I know. And and it's like, oh wow, she actually has a, a a good sense of things. I mean, so it's kind of cool when when you realize I can actually ask for her thoughts on something, and she'll give me good feedback. You know, like oh, I awesome. I can actually listen to it and and know that she she actually thought about it, and you know, so. And it, it makes me feel so good. Like I, that was where I was going with that was like, I wonder, does it make you feel really good when your grandson looks at your painting and is like, oh, I love it. You know, <laughs> like, cause it makes me feel really good. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. The little guy would look at my paintings from the, like he was just two weeks old and he'd stare up at my paintings and wave his arms and coo at them. And I just, um, yeah. I love that, you know, he just, he just really, he likes watching painting videos with me. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, we'll, yeah. Um, Peter, did I see a question about why I use Canvas then or something like that? Or um, I thought I saw a question that said like, why Canvas then? But I don't know the context. Yeah, Christy Kentara says, why Canvas then? Is that because I still use Canvas or is that what she's saying i'm not basically. i'm not exactly sure okay um well yeah go or ahead maybe like that. why yeah. in general would somebody use it maybe yeah yeah go go for it and then i have another question okay he has another question okay um i don't know if i have a good answer <laughs> i mean i think really it, it comes down to like danny you can answer uh, you know but for me i choose canvas for a couple reasons I don't always like I have 
I actually really like some of these um, wood panels that I get. They're kind of like what Diana was using, um, where it's very smooth. And, and I like it because I don't frame those. They're a certain size that I generally get. And, and I, like the, I like the way they feel. And I really like, because they're so hard um, and strong, I can really, like I can use the palette knife on them and I can um, just press down and be rough with it. And I don't have to worry at all about like the canvas underneath. But there are times, other times, when I will choose a canvas because it's the size. Like a you know very very large size canvas is easier to get than yeah. a very very large size um, panel. Even though you can, you can get panels that are kind of like a stretch canvas. They're they're mounted and they can come pretty big, but. It's just easier to get the other one, so. They yeah. weigh so much. The the big ones just it, unless you're a bodybuilder. Uh, yeah. Then I at a certain size I switch to uh, canvas because they you can you know. Yeah, pack them that's around. true too. <laughs> um, but these things really weigh a lot, and um, that came home to me when I moved. Uh, you know, when you're lifting a box of like 10 of these, you know you're lifting mm. something. It's crazy how heavy yeah. they are. <laughs> um, and the, they store nicely. I put these in um, art bags when I'm done, art storage bags when they're all varnished up and dried. And then they stay really nice and they don't get scratched up if you have a weird storage situation for your paintings. Um, I just love being able to just tuck them in a storage bag. And canvas seems a little wobbly for that, I don't know. But I do, um, I love canvas for big paintings because it also has that nice spring to it. Um, yeah. Man. Feel like I might be overworking things. How are you doing, Chad? I can't see you. Uh, yeah, no, it, <laughs> I, I feel okay. Um, I'm just kind of looking. You know what I like is sometimes looking at the computer because I can see my painting as a thumbnail, and so I'm just you know kind of looking to see oh, yeah. you know what do I like or not like. And uh, so we we have a few questions. Yeah. Um, somebody asks, do either of you ever use mediums? Yeah, sometimes. How about you? Uh, sometimes, yeah. Not not that often, but sometimes. I have a glazing medium I'll use sometimes if I need to glaze my painting. If I if I feel like I need to go over a whole area, um, and it's dry, I'll put it, use a glazing medium. Um, there are times when I will use like a structural paste if I'm just not getting, or a structural gel, like a clear gel, if I'm not getting the brush marks I want, I'll add a clear gel to my paints. Um, and, but normally, no. Normally, it's just paint. Yeah, for me, I, I also sometimes will use a... Um, like for glazing, I'll definitely use something if I'm doing a glaze. And then what I have done sometimes to, depending if I think about it, because sometimes I don't, I just don't think about it. And then sometimes I think about it and I kind of like this, I like this effect, but sometimes I will put on kind of a, a medium and then I'll paint into it if I want to slow the drying down and, um, and do something that that might uh, end up being um, a little bit softer edges and things like that. So those are the most of the times that I'll use a medium. What was your other question, Peter? Um, there are a few of them. So Tracy Tracy Gordon asks, "What is an art storage bag?" Um, you can just get them uh, at. Arts, you know, art stores, they come in a roll, they're big. 
and they're um, they're made for art, so they have don't have a lot of um, acids in them. They're acid-free plastic storage bags, and I just stick my painting in the bag, fold it over, and put it on the shelf. I write the name of the painting on the side right here. Um, so that when it's sitting on the shelf in the bag, I can see what painting it is because they're stacked. They're stacked like this. Do, 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 and then the name of the painting is right here and it's in a bag. And that way, if it gets hot in the storage room, their paintings aren't sticking to each other. Um, and the storage bag keeps it from being scratched. I don't know if you've ever had a painting get scratched, but it's really sad. Oh, man. <laughs> And when they're on these boards, they can get scratched. Something can get right in there. And you saw how easily it is for me to scratch it up. And that can happen after they're painting t painted, too. And that really gets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, just painful. So it, it just, yeah, it helps. Um, if I put a canvas into the art storage bag, I'll put a piece of cardboard behind it because canvases can get punctured in storage too. It, you know, I, I don't know, I must have really bad storage uh. places. But, <laughs> um, just if you move a lot or if you have to switch things around or if you're taking them to galleries a lot, I do that just to keep them from damage. Smart. Uh, once they're, yeah, once they're done. Because I've had some tragedies where Somebody's wanted a painting, and then I have to inform them. I'm sorry that oh man, got wrecked. yeah, you know, yeah. That's a bummer. I know. I yeah. Go ahead. Or, oh no no. Oh I'm no! I was just thought. gonna say that <laughs> I, I I have had a, a couple bad things happen. Also, I I can't remember the last time I've had something really bad happen, but I I remember one time in particular. I was driving, and I had my paintings. I had some paintings in the back seat of the car. They were propped. They were kind of like leaned back against the. This was a long, long, long time ago, and I I had to put on my brakes harder than I normally do, and all the paintings went forward and fell forward. And one of them, I actually I think I had some that were like so I had some on the back seat, but then I had some on the floor of the of the back as well. And so the ones that the one that was in the front on the seat fell forward and it actually punctured through the um <coughs> like the middle of the canvas. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was able to fix it. Well, actually I think my dad um maybe was the one who really fixed it, but I think he showed me how to fix it. Um but that was a big lesson for me is like yeah, there's so many ways that, and and especially, you know, I mean, like you're saying, it doesn't matter if it's a canvas or a, a panel because you can, you can kind of, but panels I feel a little bit better with usually. Um, yeah. But the the canvases can also, um, I mean, the the panels can also get get damaged pretty easily if you're if you're not careful, and sometimes it's even just like if you stack them against each other in the wrong way or you know different things and you just rub off a little bit of paint usually that kind of stuff isn't a huge deal as long as you you know can still touch it up and and all that but it's sometimes just a little bit of it's just like when i was a house painter an ounce of prevention is uh it's worth right worth a lot of cleaning up and fixing later Yes. Well, that's also why it's nice to have a limited palette, because if you need to touch up ah. your painting, it's much easier what to figure color? out what you yeah. used, <laughs> right? If you're using 25 colors, you might not ever yeah, figure out what sure. colors you use to touch it up again. Now, what I'm doing right now is going back to some of my spots that I started with, and I'm lightening them because they've dried darker. And because I want to bring my darkest darks down to the foreground, so some of these areas back here have to get a bit lighter, quite a bit lighter.
This is actually really fun to do because you know when you're really familiar with an area, sometimes yeah. you don't paint it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for picking such cool images. Well, next time, didn't you pick the, uh, the yeah, one from Italy? Yeah, that's going to be fun. Aren't we going to do a, a piece from Italy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, take us on yeah, a little Yeah, no, vacation. I'm excited. You can tell us about it since I've, I've never been there. Okay. Oh, well, yeah, I know. I'd love that. to. <laughs> take your family. Yeah, right. <laughs> that needs to be fixed. Um, where, where is it? I can't remember. You, you just said Italy, but is there a particular place where it is? Well, I don't know. There were two. Uh, Renee just said you like the one from Italy, but there oh, okay. were two from Italy. It, and one is from central Tuscany, um, and one is from north of Siena. Okay, so this one was looking so, up at a, a, a building. I don't know if it's a house or if it's a some kind of hotel or structure. It's got a slanted... It's it's like the, the foreground is higher on the right side and it kind of slopes down to the left and there's some trees and yes that one's from central okay. uh, Tuscany um, and I will uh, ha I'm in the painting mode right now so I can't think of names but I will. Uh, I will have the okay, name cool. the next yeah. time we paint and the location. I'll, I'll show Very you. Very fun. Yeah. That'll be fun. Peter, was there another question? Uh, yeah, we have a, a few more questions. Um, okay. So if we get to those, it's 613 right now. Okay, yeah. Well, um, we're... So Becca Farmer oh, cool. asked, can you please ask them if they varnish? Yes, I do. Always. Varnish is the it is that step of protection, it and it equalizes all the different shininesses. But it also, if you get a good varnish, it has a UV protective layer in it, and um, it's meant to. It also helps stick the paint all down. If you accidentally put some water in your acrylics. Um, most people don't know that if you put too much water in your acrylics, you've broken the binder and they won't stick to the canvas. Um, and so it helps stick everything down too. It's the glue that, it's glue that holds it all in place, but it also makes it archival. And if you use the under um, glaze, there's a, a, a top coat, then that makes the, the paintings, something that you could restore if there was a damage to them. Uh, and it helps seal all the paints in place, keeps them from being scratched, helps in so many ways. I, um, however, that saying, my varnish from Golden has been back ordered since Oh, really? March. And there's, they're not uh, saying it's coming anytime soon. So, <laughs> and I've looked on three different supply chain air wow. supply websites and it's all oh, that's a bummer so my answer is the I same know. peter so yeah. next question um yeah so <laughs> okay yeah we, we have a lot of questions they just keep coming um oh, okay so let's oh. see which one should i get right. to okay aomi had one a while ago that i want to make sure i get to she says um, I have a quick question for both Jed and Diana. It's clear to me that you are doing very different versions of the same photo, yet I'm wondering at what point you can say that you can sell each of your work as your own. Um, and I, I asked for clarification and she said, hi, Peter, it has to do with discussion Jed has focused on before about making a copy of someone else's work and not selling it as your own versus creating your own work to sell. Okay, so basically you can paint the same scene as anybody else, right? Um, I mean, if this was Diana's, and this is Diana's photograph, so it, well. You can sell it. You <laughs> yeah. have my permission. So what I was going to say is like, <laughs> like, that is the issue, is that it's her photograph. It's it's not that she's, if, if she was painting, if I was watching a lesson of hers, or if I was sitting here and just watching everything that she does and copying that, that's also an issue. So you kind of got two separate issues. One is 
where's the reference from? And one is, is it a lesson that you're just, you know, copying somebody else's design and, and kind of like the, the whole way that they did it, right? We're painting at the same time. We're not look like Diana can't even see what I'm doing. It's her reference photo. So obviously like yeah. everything about it for her is, is good to go. But it, like, even if this was just like a neutral reference, the only way that it would be a problem it would be if, if you were watching somebody else paint it and then you copied what they did as long as it's because essentially you're saying if you went to the same location, if we were both standing here looking at this, we both have equal rights to paint this and there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing um, limiting about that. It's just in terms of like when, whenever you're doing a, a like a course or, or, or you're learning from somebody else, like if I was in a workshop and, and I was, um, that's where it gets a little tricky. Like did the artist who was in the workshop that I was learning from, did they do a bunch of work on my painting or did I just copy one of their paintings or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. But as long as it's, it's your own work, um, and the scene itself is not copyrighted, you know, like unless it's a photograph or something that you found and, and it is kind of owned by somebody else, then you have to make sure that you do enough work to, you know, like uh, change it. Like there is a, a, a definable kind of law. It's not, I don't know all the rules, so don't look to me to tell you the like the the actual law of the copyright. Mm -hmm. But there is a certain like percentage that they'll say. I'm pretty sure that they define that says like if you change it X percent, <laughs> um, you can use it. But I think that's what it says. Again, don't don't get your legal advice from me. I'm not a lawyer. I'm almost a lawyer, but I'm not quite there. So <laughs> just joking. Yeah. I'm not at all a lawyer. Do you have any uh, anything to add to that, Diana? Cause... Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as selling a painting, I mean, you know, people will love what you do and want to buy it. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are some really specific rules if you want to put it in mm, a show. Yeah. And you need to remember where you got them. I used to do show. I mean, I used to be like the head of shows. And several people got banned from shows for wow. life because they used a copy of a photograph from like an old issue, you know, outdated issue of oh, like yeah. Life magazine. Wow. Um, and those are copyrighted and they cannot be reproduced without yeah. the author's permission. And um, so you may want to privately sell a painting, and there's nothing wrong with that. But please shows show are totally it. a different it's matter, better. aren't they? Right, totally a different matter, and maybe not even put it yeah. on the web, where it can be discovered if you don't know who the author of the photo is. Um, if you're getting it from a free source, that's fine. You know, there's lots of free sources. But one of the, the things that I just have to say about that, and I'm kind of opinionated, is that I think at a certain point, artists need to do their own work, conceive the painting, see it, be out there, find it, look for it. It comes from your heart, you know. So when you have a show, you know, Jed's got this show coming up at, at the Cole Gallery, or maybe it's already started. When you have a show, you have something to say. You're saying something unique. Not just that you painted a bunch of nice pictures, but that you're saying something and that you conceived of the paintings. They're yours, your ideas, your fresh thoughts. So I have, you know, I have that thought in mind that, you know, by the time you get to the point where you're having shows, yeah. show what's your best work and have something and your original, you know, things that you conceived inside yourself that, that you have something to talk about. Uh, the color of light, the movement of diagonals, the fall of shadows, those are all legitimate things to talk about. And they, they kind of express something more than that eventually. And, you know, to me, I get, I get kind of passionate about that because 
I love to see what people have yeah. to say, not just how yeah. good, how good they can paint. I want to see I want to see what's what else you know what's more what more. Um, yeah, I think anyway. that's that's super <laughs> super good because what what I also would say and add to that is that it's very tempting to want to paint. Um, you see somebody do something and you like it. And it's very tempting to want to paint it, right? It's very tempting to um, want, you know, think or 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 think, if only I could do that. Well, the reality is, is you can, you can do it. And so sometimes, you know, I'm a, I am totally an advocate of copying other artists because I think that you have to yeah. learn and you have to. Sometimes that's the best way. And I say this all the time. If I go to a workshop, I try to forget everything I know. And I try to, I try to just follow what they're saying exactly as they're saying it. I try to, you know, make my brushstrokes look like their brushstrokes, whatever it is. I'm trying to learn from their point of view. Absolutely. At the same time. You are your own person, and if the, like, if if you really can take in what the other artist, the the foundational things that they're teaching you, you will be able to take that, and you'll be able to put it into your own work. And what will be exciting about that is that it, it's it's going to be your own thing and like diana is saying is your voice is always going to have its own unique kind of element and um mm -hmm. so it's definitely like sometimes it's a step along the way that you're you're copying but it's a it's almost like the encouragement i give is just to think and to believe in yourself enough that you Absolutely. that you can do it and that you can come up with it on your own and that you can, you know, and it is, a, it is harder in, in a lot of ways to, to take, um, to get your own resource photos or to go find things and to paint and stuff like that. Um, but it's not impossible, you know, and, um, and, and sometimes it's just like it, it's opening up that part of you that, that will go outside and wonder, and kind of like think what what would this look like you know what would what could I do with this scene right here because um, so often like I mean to me Diana there this scene is cool but it's it's nothing yeah. spectacular like this is just along right. a road somewhere you know right or something like that right yeah it's a highway right there you snap yeah. it out of the, out of the so, car so you highway, know it's yeah. it's not like you have to, you know, go on a special trip or, or anything like that. Most of the stuff that you see people paint, that's really cool. Most of the time, it's just something very ordinary from their life that they, they, you know, figured out a cool way to paint. So. Yeah. It's all in the, it's all in how it's painted. Not in necessarily yeah. what is painted, but how you've seen the most. I have a friend who paints sneakers. And he, he paints little toy robots and sneakers and he sells them for massive amounts of money and he sells out shows and they're absolutely wonderful. It doesn't matter what mm. you paint. You just, you know, it just matters how you paint it, that it's painted with passion and beauty and, um, yeah. you know, yeah. dedication to the craft of painting. Good question. Um, yeah, it was really opens a lot of doors for discussion. What's next, Peter? Um, oh, I made a goober. Oh, no. Oh, well, we'll just make move that into there the you painting, go. huh? <laughs> um, so then we have Carol Bridge asks, how do you know when to stop? When is the painting finished? Well, I'm going to stop whenever we finish asking the last question or answering the last okay, question. Okay, so I'll, <laughs> there's one more question then. So answer that one and then one more, and then we'll, we'll call good. Okay. Okay, I I'll tell you when I uh, when I stop, and I always uh, I I am trying not to be a smart aleck, but stop before you're ready to stop. Stop when Ooh. before you think you're done, and and sit back and look at it before you put the last marks on it. If you just keep whapping away, you'll overwork. 
Yeah. A hundred percent of the time. So stop before you think you're done when you still have tons of painting energy and make yourself sit back and look. That's good advice. Because sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. just good, you know? Yeah, that's very good advice. Okay. I'm, I yeah. think I'm done. Well, I, I, I think that I may have already gone past where I wanted to, but I'm just going to... Like Amy Erickson, I asked her, or somebody asked that, that this is the very question, and I, she gave me one of the best answers that I that I, I have heard because I, I, I've always felt like, oh, no, what if you screw up? What if you go too far? You've totally lost it. There's no going back, you know, and, and it's kind of like a lost cause. And and there is some truth in, in that. But the way that she described it was think of it like you're riding a train and say I'm taking a train down to Portland, right, because I want to go visit Diana. And I, I'm like supposed to get off the train in Portland, but I end up accidentally sleeping through, you know, and I keep painting and all of a sudden we're like, oh no, I'm in Salem already. You know, like I didn't want to, I, I missed the exit, you know, well, I could get off in Salem or, or maybe I have to wait until I get to, you know, Eugene, Oregon to be at the next place that I can get off that looks good. Mm -hmm. And her point was you can keep, it's not going to be the same as it was in Portland, but you can get to a net, the next destination if you just keep working it. And, but the trick is you have to stay with the, the feeling that you want. Like if, if all of a sudden you've gotten painting and you're really, really like tight and you wanted it to be a loose painting and now every brush stroke is tight and, and all that, then you need to somehow figure out how to get some of the freshness back into the painting um, while you're still working on it so that it can get to the destination that you want still. Um, but anyways, I'm with Diana. Robert Gann, this is the last quote I'll say on this, but he said, it's better to have a painting 10% unfinished than 1% overdone. Think of it like a cookie. A cookie, in my <laughs> yeah. mind, is always better, a little bit gooey, and a little bit, you know, un uncooked, um, rather totally than agree. brittle and hard and over and burnt. <laughs> you know, <Burnt>. so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will tell you one quote from one of my teachers, and he said, "There isn't a right and wrong time to stop." An artist just stops at an interesting yeah. point. He ends the painting when the painting is all together at an interesting point uh, and leaves it. And so many of us work it until it's not interesting yeah. anymore. Uh, and so, so that saying, uh, I don't want to yeah, overwork yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think I should be done too, like I said. But... Is there another question? One more question, Peter? No, that was it. That was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. I thought there was one more. All right. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, okay. some have come in after I said I was going to stop taking questions. But... Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> well, sorry that we didn't get all your questions answered tonight, but man, beautiful painting, Diana. I really love yours. Yeah. Love your Thanks. I can't wait to I can't wait to see yours. Love yeah, both I think of it's got a, I think it's got a little it's got some potential. I think I think more what I'm gonna do is make some um little shifts in design. Um I'm gonna delete this thing right here. But yeah, it's super fun. Super fun to see the different paintings and um I'm gonna yeah. switch my camera. It's great. Boom. I'm back, I'm back this way. Sounds good. Okay, I'll switch my camera. I'll okay, my well, camera you guys, too. thank you go. so much for are. being here, uh, Peter. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you yeah. want to say anything on the um, way out? Yes, I do. I want to say a couple things. One, be sure to like the stream if you haven't yet. Be sure to give a like on the stream, and then also, guys, we have a three-day masterclass coming up in September. Huge masterclass, free masterclass yeah. from Jed Dorsey happening on Facebook. So if you haven't signed up for that already, be sure to go to acrylicuniversity.com and sign up for that. It's going to be amazing. I just watched it Jed's is. first lesson yesterday and it's going to be incredible. So 
Sign up, acrylicuniversity.com. Tell your friends about it. Spread the word. And um, I, that's all I had to say. Diana, any last words? No, just thanks for including me in this. This was super fun. Oh, man. Thank you so, Thank much. You so much for being here. It was a blast. And um, really, really, yeah. really uh, <laughs> appreciate it. And um, man, when when you come back, we're going to have... I'm going to I'm going to just tell everybody right now cuz we didn't do it tonight but it was mostly because uh it wasn't we had we had so many technical things that we were working through yeah. but I want I want to see Diana if you will offer this painting that you did tonight next time when we're on uh as yeah. as available for anybody who who might be interested in purchasing it, uh purchasing it so Anyways, we haven't talked about that, but maybe next time, if yep. you come back, this little painting that Diana just did will be available for you. Mm -hmm. So um, anyways, thank you guys so much. Like Peter said, September yeah. 13th through Thanks. 17th, mm -hmm. you can go right now to acrylicuniversity.com and you can register for that. We have a, a page that is almost ready to uh, link up and it'll give you some more information, but sign up because it's going to be a blast. It's going to be super fun. It is. Thank you, Diana. Amazing. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Thank Thanks. you, everybody, Pleasure to be for here. showing up. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Have a wonderful evening. You're